this is one of the harder lessons we're going to be working on. So something that I did is I made a video using unit cubes. So these fun things that you probably use in elementary school where I use blue as positive and red as negative to show how we can substitute values in by breaking down the numbers that has the larger absolute value. So in this case, we're going to start working with 13 and we're going to break it apart. So if I had, let me show you. Here are my 13 positive unit cubes. So I got 13 unit cubes. It's going to be equal to 10 plus what? So if I count off 10 and I split it into two parts, like how you have two parts of a number bond, I have 10 and 3. So 13 is the same as 10 plus 3. And I like to hit this type of math button. 13 equals 10 plus 3. So now, instead of writing 13 in this next problem, it wants us to write 10 plus 3, right? Because all I did is I'm just taking this 13 and I'm splitting it up. So we're going to leave the negative 10 alone. I got, don't worry, I got my negative 10 here. So we got negative 10 plus, we're splitting this up into 10 and 3. So now we can use the associative property and group these things together. So when I have this all together, right? So here's my 13, my 10 and my 3, and here's my negative 10. I can now move and associate instead of these two together, associate these two together. So let's write what that would look like. That would be putting these grouping symbols around negative 10 and 10. I group these together and here's my three that I still have on the outside. These are additive inverses. When I zero them out, right, I can match a negative one and a positive one together all the way down. This is going to be zero plus three, right? These are zeroed out. They went away. We're left with just Three. So this is going to be kind of a weird lesson. All we're doing is we're taking the number with the larger absolute value, the one that has the most blocks. So in this case, 13 had more blocks than negative 10. So we're taking it, we're going to split it into two parts. Let's look at the next one. So we're going to write 14 as a sum of 8 and something else. So let me get my 14 positives here. So here are my 14, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. I want to write it as 8 and another number. So let's count off 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 8 and then I had 6 left over. So that number bond for 14 is 8 and 6. So we can rewrite it here. 14 equals 8 plus 6. Now in this next one, what we want to do is we want to add negative 8, right? So here's my negative 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, negative 8, plus my 14. I already found out I can split this up into 8 and 6. This is still 14. So we have our negative 8 plus 8 plus 6. So that's what I'm going to write here. Negative 8 plus 8 plus 6. So now in this next one, it wants us to use the associative property. So this is our 14, right? This 8 plus 6. Instead of grouping these together, I want to take that 8 and group it with this negative 8. What that's going to do is we're going to now have an additive inverse here. Negative 8 plus 8 zeros out these negatives and these positives. They match up. It's like Tetris where it disappears when you get them all nice and lined up. These are all nice and lined up. They disappear. We are left with zero because it's zeroed out plus six or just our six positive here. So all we're doing is zeroing out so inverse that we can match this additive inverse and we're left with just a positive or a negative value. So if I go to the next slide, they're saying 13 plus negative 20. Let's get all negative 20 here. Here's my negative 20. Let's get 13. This should be it. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Positive 13. Negative 20. It's kind of a big stick for negative 20. We need to break up this larger stick so that I can zero out with the smaller stick of positives. So if I can get these to line up. I can split this negative 20 into two numbers, and it's going to kind of make sense when we look. 
So I want these to match up perfectly. And then I have some left over. I split this negative 20 up into negative 13 and negative 7. So this is just still negative 20. I still have 20 blocks here, but it's split up into 13 and 7. So we can rewrite negative 20 as negative 13 and 7. So we can write this whole sum as 13 plus negative 13 plus negative 7. So this negative 13 and negative 7 is the same as that negative 20. But now in this next line, we can use additive inverse and associative properties. I'm going to take this negative 13 and group it with that positive 13 so that this zeroes out. This is going to go away. So these pairs, it's like Tetris again, like it matches up, lines up perfectly, and it goes away. It disappears. It zeroes out. So we're left here with zero plus negative seven or just negative seven. So without the blocks for this one, let's see. We have negative 11 plus 9. This number I want to put next to 9 needs to zero out with 9. So we need to split negative 11 into two parts. I want one part to zero out with that 9, and then the other part just kind of be like a remainder. The number that zeroes out with 9, I know the additive inverse is negative 9. So we know we're going to have some number and some number plus negative 9. And then that 9 stays the same. If I split negative 11 into negative 9, the other piece that remains must be negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 9. This is the same as this negative 11. Now we can use our grouping symbols. I can group together that negative 9. My grouping symbols will go. I can group together that negative 9 and that positive 9. They zero out. So we're left with negative 2 plus 0 or just negative 2. Last one here, 25 plus negative 15. We need to split up the positive 25. I need one of the numbers to zero out with negative 15, which means I need the additive inverse of negative 15, which is going to be positive 15. So I already know I have some number plus positive 15 plus negative 15. The parentheses are on the negatives when I'm adding, so I can keep it straight that it's the negatives with the number, not subtraction. If we split 25 up into two numbers, we have 15 on the number bond, the other number left must be 10. So now we can use that associative property. We can group together positive 15 and negative 15. We know that that is going to zero out. We know that that's going to just leave that 10 in front and 10 plus zero is just 10. When you go to the next slide, it's just directions for going into class notebook, unit two, page two. The very last slide again is a glossary, so if you see a vocabulary word and you're unsure what it means, you should be going to this glossary. If you are still confused on this, there is another video that I have posted on Canvas about working with the unit cubes to help us kind of break apart these sums. So I recommend watching that video if you need help. But other than that, you guys are doing great. We're still adding rational numbers and we can keep